Yeah, so what we thought we would do here is um, you've heard a lot of really good content from the speakers before us about um, the business side of things and, um, you know, some of the key trends that are going on. We wanted to close by showing you some uh, actual product in action. Um, and you probably heard from Param earlier in the day that uh, we, we release major updates to our products twice a year and we're right in the window now of uh, an update that's imminently coming. Uh, <laughs> some of it's come out over the last couple of days. A few products are still to come in the days ahead. And um, so what Alp and I are going to do is we're going to show you 20 things, 20 fun things in the product that are in this new release. And we're going to do it from the point of view of um, of two different personas, and they're kind of real personas actually. So, so um, as Ron said, Alp is a um, he's a developer, an RPA developer for um, for one of our partners. He's also an MVP, a UiPath MVP. So he's very deep in the sort of how do I build things from a developer point of view. And I'm I guess you could call me a citizen developer. I, I, I create my own automations, but I also use them, um, things that have been created inside UiPath for me. So I'm going to show you some of the things that uh, are empowering me as an end user or a citizen developer, and Alp's going to show you some of the things that, um, that are, are very cool from a developer point of view. And we'll try and show you 20 things in 20 minutes. So Alp's going to kick it off, and we'll switch backwards and forwards. Alp, over to you for your first, um, your first cool thing. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Uh, can can you guys see my screen now? Yeah. Perfect. Um, so the first feature that I want to share with you guys is uh, UiPath integrations. So integrations came out of the acquisition of Cloud Elements um, this year. What it allows is that um, it automatically connects and makes an API connection and builds the activities for you within your iPad Studio. So currently there are five to 10 um, connections that are already available here and they're increasing uh, in number as time goes on. If you're a technology partner, you'll be able to easily integrate your product with an API uh, automatically on this platform, uh, which will increase the adoption. And for any developer who's participating and using some of these um, um, software such as gmail or bamboo within their processes it will make it much more seamless so it's uh, you get the benefit of api automation within your ui automation to be able to once it's connected if i go to here uh, let's say uh, google docs and i already have my connection and once i connect here automatically um it will ask for me to add my credentials. And once I add it, it will define the activities for me. And in your iPad Studio, um, I'll give an example. Um, you'll be able to pretty much drag and drop the activity uh, as part of the integrations. So if you have a uh, save email or move email within my Gmail, and if I include my output connection as well, then I'll be able to just drag and drop and use them within my package which is an awesome feature. Um, that said, I'll, I'll give it back to you, Craig. Thank you, Alp. Okay, so um, you saw the integration service there. I'm gonna show you um, sort of that from an end user perspective. Um, in, in UiPath, we have an application called the Assistant, and the Assistant is something that an end user of automation, not a developer, but just someone who's going to run automation can use. So this is my Assistant, um, and one of the cool things we've added is integration with our marketplace, uh, and also with an internal automation store that can be deployed by a company. So you can see here, I've got an automation store, I've got some automations I could choose to install and use from my company, um, but I also, for example, could go and search for, um, you know, maybe I wanted to capture text from an image. Um, and you can see here that there's a automation available in the UiPath marketplace to actually do that. So we've made it very easy for, uh, for end users to discover new automations that might help them with their daily work and be able to install them. So that's sort of the, the second feature there. Number three, um, I'm gonna follow up with what Alp was just showing you. He was showing you the connection service and how it makes it easy for a developer to build uh, automations that involve UI automation 
and also um, uh, API automation. Now, as an end user, that's also easy for me. Um, I've got a, 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 um, a process here um, called demo integration, and it uses um, a similar thing to what Alt was just showing. Mine's set up to use Office 365 and Outlook in particular to send and receive email. Um, and I can go ahead and, and, and use that connection that's already in there, or I could add a new one. Um, and it would walk me through the process of um, logging in and authenticating with the multi-factor authentication required for Office 365 and configuring that connection inside my uh, user uh, credential. And the reason that's very cool is Alp can build an automation and he can use his credentials while he's doing that. But when the automation is deployed and I begin using it, it then switches across and instead is using my credentials and can only do things that I'm allowed to do. So that's a couple of features in the Assistant Marketplace integration and, um, and how the integration service also shows up for an end user in the Assistant. So back to you, Alp, for a couple more. Thank you, Craig. Speaking of marketplace, I will uh, I'd like to spend some time and talk about the new feature that is announced, um, which is monetization. So right now, um, any customer who has um, a profile in the marketplace be able to create a profile, um, be able to create a business profile in addition to their customer profiles, and uh, develop the packages that they have, upload them into marketplace and sell them. So what this brings is reliability for the packages, uh, maintainability of the packages, and allows the community and the companies out there, uh, such as Ashling, um, who's one of the launch partners, uh, to monetize and bring quality automation solutions to the market. Uh, which I find this uh, quite cool, actually. So let, let's see one case, right? Like we have. Uh, Bogdan here built a Google G Suite, and then you'll be able to start a trial or buy now, um, define a pricing based on um, your needs, and then register for a um, 12 month subscription or purchase it at once. And once you check out, you'll be able to add the information that you need for billing. And once that happens, we have the data here and add the credit card information. At pay now, so now I am subscribed to this package. So I know that Bogdan is the person to go to for Google G Suite. Um, Bogdan is able to monetize what he built, and me as the purchaser um, know that and can keep uh, Bogdan accountable to what he built. So this is a great feature um, that's out there currently. Um, another thing that it ties from marketplace. Um, to Studio is the availability of these packages right within the application interface. So if I once I uh, download or purchase it, if it is um, if it is uh, paid or non-paid, I'll be able to come here uh, into templates and go in to the drop down here and then choose marketplace and be able to access all the uh, the packages that the community. And the partners have been building, and this is this is very easy integration and, and quick to implement. And once I download them, I can easily install them um, within my project folder. Um, so that said, um, the two features back to you, Craig. Thank you, Alp. For those who have been keeping count at home, that's five things we've shown so far, and it's taken us five minutes. So that's uh, we seem to we're on track. Um, I'm gonna come back to my assistant and talk about, uh, I talked before about how the um, COE might provide me automations and how I could find them from here. I talked about finding them in the marketplace. But also we sometimes need to um, be able to suggest new automations. And so we've built that directly into the assistant. You heard our last speaker talking about Automation Hub and how they can, um, how they're using that now to run their automation pipeline. Um, from the assistant now, an end user can directly log an idea for an automation that occurs to them and, and get that straight up to the COE. Um, they can also choose to document uh, something and send in more information. So you can see here it's got document to task built right in. Um, this launches a UiPath tool called Task Capture, 
And task capture allows me to very simply capture a task um, and it will send the documentation of that to a developer to help them be able to build it. Um, by the way, if I don't have that installed, uh, it will actually automatically install that in the background when I click on that button. So it's a, it's a, it's a very unified experience. Now in this task capture tool, um, I have a few different options available to me that are, are pretty interesting. The first one is I can import a Visio file. So obviously, um, you know, a lot of documentation of processes already exists as, as, um, as Visio. And if I go ahead and do that, um, it will bring that particular task in and, um, and, and display it in terms of uh, the actual Visio um, uh, workflow that was in there. I can go ahead and annotate that further, provide screenshots uh, and extra information for um, the developer to be able to send it on. So I can reuse any documentation that I have. Another thing I can do um, that's, uh, that's kind of interesting, let's do a new, uh, new document here. And I can actually go ahead and capture um, work that I would do, and it will document all of the different screenshots. So um, I have an application here uh, called UiPath, um, uh, called WI, which is just a simple legacy kind of application that needs UI automation. So let's start a capture for that. Uh, and let's go ahead and, um, and actually do some, some work. So imagine I put a few different values in here um, and I accept them. You can see in the capture, it's going ahead and capturing all of these different screens. And maybe I do a different one. And I'm now done with my capturing. Now, this functionality was in Task Capture before, um, but uh, what, it, what it can actually do now that's very cool um, is it can uh, automatically um, identify that screens within that capture um, are the same screen and be able to merge them together and create a much simpler experience for the developer when I send that across. So instead of getting multiple copies of the screen in a big long sequence, it collapses them together and makes that very straightforward and easy for, for the developer to follow. So that's an idea of how I can get automations built for me, submitting them to the automation hub, using task capture, being able to um, import Visio um, diagrams and then improvements to that uh, recording capability with screen merge. So that's four uh, new features that we've added in. So that brings us to, uh, to number 10. So let's go back to you, Al. Thank you, Craig. Speaking of cloud, now test manager is available on cloud. Um, this, is, this is really cool because now uh, what Test Manager allows you to do is to do application testing, RPA testing, and regression testing. It being on the cloud makes it very accessible, and um, you'll be able to pretty much collect all the data within your test cases and the requirements and the test uh, sets that you defined. Uh, for example, within the dashboard, you'll be able to see uh, how much of the RPA solution is covered. Uh, and how and what is the automation rate of uh, within your RPA automation, right? So this is this is a very important indicator of what you should expect in production. So if I covered 75% of my cases, then I should expect that within uh, in, when the bot is pushed to production, that only 75% of the cases are covered. Mm -hmm. um, this this is very important for the uh, RPA COEs, um, particularly because um, it, it it helps you assess risk and mitigate them before they rise. And um, so we have pretty much here six categories, right? We have the dashboards, the overall analysis of how many um, cases are, uh, are ran. And within here, we have a demo case for loans. Um, so we will go to the loan application and submit a loan based on different cases. And uh, we tested it by running multiple um, scenarios, uh, including um, applying loan with a uh, amount that meets or applying the loan that uh, doesn't meet that of those amount. And I'm able to track all these down um, very clearly 
right in the test manager cloud. This is a very important feature because it, it does allow you to get a good transparency into the success of the automation um, and, and how, how well it's going to perform within the production. Uh, speaking of cloud, um, another thing that uh, is released recently on the cloud is document understanding and particularly Forms AI. Uh, so what Forms AI allows is that once you upload your invoices, it automatically uh, uses an algorithm, machine learning algorithm, to detect the important areas within your document uh, that you are most likely want to ex uh, want to extract. Uh, so in this case, like if I uh, upload one of my documents and then go to predict, And I think I already predicted earlier, but it, um, what it does is um, it, it, it will automatically pull uh, the number, invoice total, the, the city state, zip code, um, the subtotal, the tax, uh, predefined for me. And if there's any area that I do not like and then it's not extracted well, I can easily go here and then edit them. So this accelerates as an RPA developer, or a machine learning engineer, uh, what I do um, by ingesting the document and predicting it uh, beforehand. Um, so this is this is a pretty uh, neat feature. Um, this said, I'll I'll pass it back to you, Craig. Thank you, Alp. And uh, actually, just uh, on document understanding, uh, Alp was showing an invoice scenario there, but actually it can recognize any kind of forms-based data. So it doesn't have to just be an invoice. You can upload as a business user any kind of form, just two to three samples, mark up what you want to capture in a graphical point-and-click way, and boom, you can uh, create an AI-based document model, which is pretty, pretty amazing. So I'm going to go into studio now. Um, uh, Alp's been showing you Studio from the point of view of a uh, RPA developer. I'm using a simplified version because I'm not a sophisticated developer. We call it Studio X. It takes away some of the complex things, but still allows me to use uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the power of Studio to build something. So a couple of things we've added here that are very cool. The first is a new activity uh, UI. So we used to have a, a experience here where it was a linear kind of stack of, um, of cards that you used as a citizen developer. Um, but what we found is as we added more capabilities, uh, it was, that didn't scale necessarily very well. So now I have a tree-based way of finding things. It's still very easy and very clear to find what's going on. Uh, it's just, it, it, I can collapse it and it makes it easier to work with. Second thing on activities that, uh, that that's very cool is um, we've been talking about AI quite a bit in this session. We've built AI into Studio as well. And so we suggest the next best activity based on AI models that have looked at all the different automations that people have built. So um, if I go in here, for example, you'll see that it's suggesting to me that I might want to use uh, Outlook and do some email, or I might want to use Excel, et cetera. I'm getting a common set of activities. If I choose to use Excel and I go in and, um, and, and, and add an activity here, it's going to give me a contextual set of things now related to the fact I'm working with Excel. It didn't used to work this way before. It always showed the same list of activities by default. And now those activities change. Uh, based on where I'm working and what other people have been doing in our overall ecosystem. And that makes it much easier for me as a non-sophisticated developer. It helps me discover the activities I want to work with uh, in, in different areas. So that's a few improvements on activities. And it takes us to, um, we've done 13 of our features now. So back to you, Alp, for number 14. Thank you, Craig. Um, you, you, you've shown the task capture um, and tying that to task mining now, there are two very important uh, features that are released. Um, I wish that I, I had more to show here, um, but uh, one of the most important thing is the PII masking. Uh, what task mining allows is to download a recording, a recorder on your computer and then capture the screen actions as you go. Um, and it will automatically create the process model for you. 
one of the most important areas for that is can it um, recognize the social security numbers or if uh, i'm a healthcare client can it recognize my insurance numbers or um, other uh, sensitive data and information that i do not want to share um it it, it what pi masking allows it pretty much mask that data it blurs it out um so that uh, the data is secure and um it, it, it is compliant with the current regulations. And tying into that, uh, task mining is also now available on premises, not only cloud, so that it is completely air gapped environment to where you know that your data is safe and secure and uh, ready to be processed and looked for uh, further automation opportunities within um, the process graph. And so those are two features related to task mining. Uh, back, back to you, Craig. Thank you, Al. Okay, so one quick one for me uh, is something called feed management. So back in studio, one of the great things about um, our ecosystem is it's very open and you can pull in all sorts of different components and use them to build things very quickly. However, um, that may not be a good idea for all citizen developers. You might want to control what they use. You might want to verify the, the, the feeds that they're pulling from, and you might want to just lock them down, for example, to internal things. So that's in fact what we've done here at UiPath. If I go into my settings and look at manage sources, you can see here that there's a comment saying full functionality is restricted by company policy. Um, and if I attempt to add new packet sources or turn on ones that I had previously set up before this policy was implemented, I can't do that. So my COE is basically saying we have an approved set of, um, of components that you can work with. You're most welcome to use all of those, but you can't just go out into the great unwashed world. And that protects me and it protects the company. So um, obviously a, a more sophisticated developer like, um, like Alp may not have this policy applied and it's granular. It can be applied to different users, different groups, different profiles in, in the way that the company sees fit. So we've really strengthened and baked in an incredible amount of governance in this release. Alp, back to you for some uh, computer vision. Yeah, so as a developer, um, one of the biggest part of the job is to define the elements within the application or the browsers. Um, so one of the benefits that is uh, recently uh, released is pretty much capturing all elements. So let's say that I like to automate the calculator app, um, for an example. Um, as a developer, what I used to do would be to come here and then recognize each of these buttons and elements and then make sure that they have anchors to the other buttons and to, to make it pretty much stable. So it is a quite time consuming thing to do, uh, making sure the selectors are right and making sure I have covered 100 buttons. And so now what the new feature does is, yeah, I can easily come here and then click capture all elements. Once I click on capture all elements and then choose the application I want, your iPad will automatically detect the possible selectors and buttons within my application interface. If I say capture, now it will go and then pick each of these buttons. Um, it also allows me to go back and define the anchors, or if I uh, dislike something, then I can choose that. Um, it's it's a really um, accelerator for the for the RPA development teams. It also builds the application uh, within the object repository so that once I define this calculator, any of my RPA teams can continue to use that. Uh, it's pretty neat. Um, that said, I'll, I'll back, uh, push, uh, pass it back to you, Craig. Thank you, Alp. We're on the home stretch now, people. We just passed number 16. So he built a UI library using that tool, and I've spent time building those manually by hand. And so, you know, that will be a huge time saver. As a citizen developer in the past, I couldn't use those libraries. I would have had to build that myself each time. Uh, now in, um, uh, in, uh, uh, in Studio X, 
uh, I have the ability to use a UI library. So you can see here a, um, uh, a, um, uh, a workflow that automates this double UI application. And it's basically just typing a few things into it. Uh, and then I want to, at the end, once I'm finished typing in, I want to be able to click on the accept button, essentially, the, the accept button here. So on the, on the right-hand side in my object repository, you can see a library that Alp built earlier and shared with the company so that when they want to automate this particular application, they don't need to figure anything hard out. They can just pick the, the various controls that they want. So I can just drag my accept button across um, and say I want to click it. Um, and that's all I have to do. I'm now using a library built by a professional developer to do UI automation, and it's centrally managed. So if this UI changes, if the application changes, Alp can fix whatever needs to be done centrally in the main library, uh, and then I'm able to inherit those changes without having to understand what happened as a citizen developer. So this is a huge time saver, but also it helps you with reliability and maintainability of applications. And that was number 17. So number 18, another um, uh, citizen developer uh, uh, idea is um, protecting my code. So if I'm working as a real developer, I might be using a source code repository like TFS or Git or something like that to work with a team, but also to version and protect my code as I work. Now, as a as a non-developer, I don't understand those things. I don't want to know about them. I would like the benefit, but I don't want to have to do uh, the, the technical work. And so we've just built it right in. My my program um, that I'm working on here, my application is actually under source code protection um, using Git, and that's been turned on by my uh, by my COE um, in the past. So under settings in team, they've just enabled this setting centrally, uh, and I'm getting the benefit of all of that without having to know any of the hard things about it. So back over to you, Alp, to bring us home with the very last two features. Thank you, Craig. The last two features, uh, one of them is the installer. So one of the problems that uh, as an RPA developer that we face uh, is pretty much installing all the software. Uh, we will face the problem of uh, downloading the orchestrator on-prem and setting up the uh, Elasticsearch or the SQL uh, servers. And additionally, um, making sure the on-prem high availability servers are ready um, is that uh, it can, can be time consuming. Um, what UiPad introduced is a platform installer tool. And this allows going into the root and downloading Pretty much automation hub, task mining, document understanding, orchestrator at once, and however I want with the multi mode, single mode, with the test environment, uh, production environment, air gap, or online in the cloud, I'll be able to run it all at once here. It's very uh, brings a time efficiency and it also allows um, as uh, customers to the customers that. Um, have everything ready uh, within your platform. So if you have the orchestrator ready and then you're running the bots in your production and you want to enable UiPath insights, um, it's just a um, button of uh, click of a button to activate the license for insights. Um, so it's um, it's a very cool feature um, since the the community uh, had some issues around this. It's a very good introduction. Um, speaking of efficiency, um, UiPath also introduced a few new um, document understanding uh, models. So if I go to AI Center right now and let it uh, load a little bit, and I know that now UiPath introduced a few new models that focus on ID extraction and passport labeling. Let me go back to ML package, go to out of the box package, and I go to UiPath document understanding. And here now I can see the receipts, the W2, W9, uh, passports, uh, invoices Japan. And these are all new um, models that UiPath introduced. And I'll be uh, very easily uh, retrain them 
uh, as I go and, in, and embed them within my UI path uh, studios and ML skill um, to and then this ties to the point of um, how AI integrates with RPA. Uh, so this is a pretty cool feature uh, for any process that does QYC and, and more. Um, that, that said, um, I'll, I'll pass it back to you, Craig, for the final remarks. Thanks, Alp. And, um, you know, so I, we just wanted to give you a taste for some of the things that you've heard about throughout the session. As you can see, this is a very large um, platform. It has a lot of capability in it. And we just sort of picked out our 20 favorite things to show you uh, quickly. Um, there's a lot there. Uh, I encourage you to um, to get started with the latest release and, uh, and, and look at, you know, how you start your journey to the fully automated enterprise. 